there's been so much said and so much written about the Patriots, Tom Brady, and the end of the Brady era in New England. There's been books, tomes written about this. Here's my belief. My belief is that Tom Brady and those around him felt as though he wasn't properly valued in the final five years of his career there. They had drafted Garoppolo. They haggled over money. Belichick drove him like he was always driven as a younger player as well and was treated as just another guy within the organization. You can be replaced. You don't get any benefit of the doubt in contract negotiations. You don't get to take a rest just because you're Tom Brady. You're like everybody else. And that singed the butt hairs of Tom Brady. And Brady felt disrespected by all of that. And that Robert Kraft tried to play nice guy. But ultimately, Bill pulled the purse strings and everything. Bill decided who played, who didn't, who was drafted, who got paid, how practices were run. And so Kraft could only do so much. That ultimately, it was about Belichick v. Brady. And once Brady saw that he couldn't squeeze any more Super Bowls out of the franchise, finally said, you know what, I'm out of here. I think Brady was there, I don't want to say against his will because it was a decision he made, but I think for the final three, four years in New England, Tom Brady would have preferred a different set of circumstances but realized this is my best chance to win Super Bowls, and that's all ultimately I care about at the end of the day. That that has to supersede everything. It has to supersede my ego, my comfort, my money. And so he traded in those three things to win. He had to win. He had to stack championships. And they went to those Super Bowls. They won two of them. They had the comeback against the Falcons. They beat the Rams. You know, they they ended up going back against the Eagles and ultimately losing that game. But I think that after that Seattle Super Bowl, it began, the clock was ticking on how long he wanted to be there, and he felt he deserved far more than he was getting. Once he saw the end of the 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 light of the end of the tunnel away from New England, Tom Brady took it and said, you know what? We were we're playing wild card weekend here in New England. The cupboards bare. Gronk's not here anymore. Edelman's about at the end. Amendola's gone. We're not drafting good wide receivers. We've never done that. We don't have a great team. Our defense isn't great. Division's getting a little better. Look, at the end of the day, he throws a pick six to end that playoff game wildcard weekend against the Titans. I think he knows this is the end here. I'm going to leave, and they're not going to be very good. They're not very good with me. And all of those feelings, you know if you've been in a relationship, in a marriage, at, at a job, where you felt like, not respected, not going well. It's We're not seeing eye to eye and you internalize, internalize, internalize because we're staying together for the kids or I need the paycheck or we got bills to pay or what have you. Somebody, you know, there's life situations. Somebody's health isn't great. Got to stay close to home, things like this. And you internalize, internalize, internalize and bite your tongue, bite your tongue, bite your tongue that once you're out of that, you look back and go, yeah, that sucked. And I think that's what's happening here. Brady's not going to say it directly, but his dad and his trainer are going to say it. They are absolutely speaking for Tom. This is how Tom feels. This is not like they're going rogue and Brady's like, hey, come on, guys, rein it in. No, this is ahead 
of Patriots Buccaneers next week and all of these old feelings of Tom wanting more respect, more money, more control, more happiness, more comfort that he didn't get is coming to the service because now he gets all of those things in Tampa. And next weekend, he gets to shove it right in Bill Belichick's keister, and I'm here for it. So that's what's going on. That's my read. Here's the cold truth, though, that Belichick driving Brady like that had its benefits. Now, I think one of the most telling sayings ever is your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. It is with everybody. Take whatever it is that you think is the best part about you and then think about how that can also hurt you and has hurt you or relationships you've had or decisions you've made. It happens to everybody. And that's Bill here. Bill's greatest strength is He created a 20-year, now 22-year, run in New England where the Patriots swing from pretty good to epically great. They're never bad. They they never have a 5-11. They never have a 6-10. The bottom never drops out with a 4-12 and a 5-11, and and then they got to rebuild. They didn't go through five years of missing the playoffs. They didn't go through three years of not winning the division. They didn't go through four straight years of not making it out of the first round of the playoffs. They swing from pretty good to epically great for 22 years. So how does that happen? That happens because Bill views everybody in the same way. Unemotional, all business, wrangle over every penny, and we do it my way. There is no other way but my way. There's no, oh, he's the favorite son of the franchise, I get out of the way. There's no, oh, the owner would rather pay him more money than we can afford, I step aside. There's no, oh, he gets special treatment because he's really good. Everybody in the locker room deals with the same fate. And so everybody has to buy in. And the moment you don't, he gone. That creates this perpetual wheel of motion where every year is going to be the same. Last year, okay, they missed the playoffs. They weren't very good. They were slightly above average. And this year, they're probably going to be somewhat of the same, maybe a little bit better. They're never going to be 4-12. and They're never going to have the bottom drop out. It's never going to happen. And that's because of the traits Bill has that drove Brady batty. Bill's going to force you to never be chill, to never take anything for granted, to always be on point. And because he forced Brady to be uncomfortable, he could afford to force everybody else to be uncomfortable. It's what Greg Popovich did to Tim Duncan. It's what Bill Walsh did to to Joe Montana. You don't get a day off, and so I can demand everybody has to buy in the same way. Well, that creates great football teams because you lose Gronk, you plug somebody else in. You lose Dante Hightower, you plug somebody else in. You lose Jamie Collins, you plug somebody else in. You lose Aqib Tlaib, you plug somebody else in. You lose Vince Wilfork or Teddy Bruschi or Randy Moss or Wes Welker, you plug somebody else in, and you keep winning. And look, Tom Brady left, and they had garbage Cam Newton last year, and they actually were in the playoff hunt up until mid-December. And this year, they're going to have a rookie in there who's not great, who's fine, and they're going to probably be in the playoff hunt until December. Bill's greatest strength is his greatest weakness. Because of who he is, he has built this dynasty. But 
guys that leave have the same gripe. They didn't treat me well. I deserved more money. Bill grinded me too hard and didn't appreciate what I brought to him. Everybody has the same gripe. Now, does Tom Brady have more of a gripe because he's Tom Brady? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Tom Brady's great enough to be have the biggest gripe because if anybody deserved different treatment, it could have been Tom. And I think the greatest weakness here is that Bill drove Brady and that team to win three Super Bowls at the end of Brady's career and go to another. I mean, look, they went 10 years without winning a Super Bowl, but they beat the Seahawks, came back against the Falcons, beat the Rams that dreadful Super Bowl, lost to the Eagles. They got to four more at the end of Brady's career. Part of that was that that Bill never let Brady have a day off. I do think the flip side is you could have let Brady take more money, have more credibility or respect, do some of the things he wanted, and you still would have won. I mean, I, I don't it doesn't strike me that Brady is the guy that takes his foot off the gas either. That would have gotten fat and happy and didn't care. Doesn't doesn't look that way to me. But the results are there. I mean, what are you going to say? That Bill played it wrong? He went to four freaking Super Bowls with Tom Brady after Brady was the age of 35. So I totally get where Brady's coming from. I'm I'm here for him shoving it right up the tailpipe of, of Belichick next week. I hope that it happens. I'd love to see it happen. I like when Belichick is properly humbled because, you know, the big thing with me and the Patriots are largely the cheating. I mean, you can't escape that, that they built the dynasty and had two massive cheating scandals, two first-round picks docked, a never-ending cascade of whispers of how they're breaking rules, bending rules. I mean, it's it's now a joke where Peyton Manning's like, yeah, I know they had my locker bugged. We had to talk in the shower. I mean, you know, that's that's the the pristine franchise of the NFL. That's the dynasty. You know, I mean, that that's just, to me, a good reason to be able to not root for Bill because he was surreptitious and diabolical and 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 duplicitous and two-faced and all of those types of things. So I love to see him take it, you know, when right in the face. But do I think his coaching tactics with with manipulating the salary cap, the roster, and his individual players works? Of course. And he's a mastermind at it. Of course. And again, greatest the greatest strength is your greatest weakness because Bill is merciless and maniacal in competitiveness. He goes so far as to cheat and to bend rules and to, and to lie, to openly lie. And that's part of this equation. You, you can't extract the two. You know, there are just some things... I'm sure if you listen to this show every day and you love, love, love this show, I'm sure there are things where you're like, I, I don't love that part. You, you can't love everything about us. But what you get is what you get. You can't have something in this show and extract it and not have the other stuff. It's just part of the equation. That's the thing with Bill and the Patriots. You can't have the success they had without this kind of like underhanded, two-faced, you know, bending all of the rules because that's how they were all wired. At least that's how Bill was wired and, and Robert Kraft kind of allowed it to happen because he loved hanging banners. But the Guerrero, Tom Brady Sr. stuff reflects this under-the-surface resentment that Brady has now that might soften as the years go on. You know, you see this in NFL history quite a bit. Ditka and Buddy Ryan hated one another at the end. Hated one another. I mean, like physical fights with one another. And then they were opposing coaches and really hated one another. Now, Buddy Ryan's passed away, but Mike Ditka will admit, you know what? I didn't win anything without Buddy Ryan. I needed him. He would have never said that 20 years ago. So things will soften. But at the moment right now, that wound is real raw.